Happy Friday, folks. I'm Tom, and the color cast is on the air now from CBS Television and Radio for Friday night, the 16th of February, 1996. Our pal Kate Mulgrew is here tonight from the Starship, and author Dean Kuntz, who has the number one bestseller in the country in hardcover today. If I were to ask you a question, and you can't answer because the toll-free is not up and running now, but it will be later, and so I'll ask Mr. Kennedy, how long would you think, just guess, how long has Dan Rather been doing uh, the CBS Evening News as anchorman here at this network? About 15 years. Well, you're very good. I would have guessed eight or nine. It's 15 years this year, and today I received a wonderful invitation from Peter Lund, who is the president of our network, uh, to uh, be in New York for a dinner honoring Dan on, uh, on March the 6th. And there was only one thing missing with the invitation. That would be the first-class round-trip <laughs> airline ticket. <laughs> but I'll send no a, a, a note. Thanks to the people at Sunoco, the Sun Company back in Philadelphia, and to Link Belt, the construction people, the heavy equipment people, they sent in four fantastic models, which we will add to our highway of life, for want of a better title, here on Monday. And we have one addition that we're making tonight that we'll show you as we roll along here tonight. We have the great uh, helicopter and, uh, and uh, tanker from Hess, and I believe Unical joins us tonight, yes, the Union 76 people. And just a little brief preview of what's to come on the... <laughs> on the highway of life. <laughs> Goodness knows what we'll see on the highway as we progress. You are correct. You know, thank you. You know, last night I mentioned that we had received here at uh, TV City the world's first computerized, uh, fully automatic uh, cat box that cleans itself with the magic fingers that scoop the poop. And so I, I had given this to Kelly, my assistant, to take home. He's got a couple of cats at home. And I said, why don't you take it home this weekend? And, and it, it uses something called clumping litter. I don't want to go there. Uh. And, and try this out and see if there's a way that we can photograph the cat without offending anybody's sensibilities or sensitivities. So I was talking to Brian McAloon and Sandy Restrepo, the directing team in there, and they said, you know, we can put the cat in a dressing room across the hall and run some wires over there and put a camera in there and leave it there for, you know, four or five seconds. I mean, all of a sudden the logistics of this get unbelievable and thousands of dollars to boot. Lo and behold, on the, uh, on the internet today, on the email box up in the office, comes a letter from somebody somewhere who has got one of these things and has videotaped his cat going through the procedure and then watching the box clean itself. Mm -hmm. And so, voila, our problem is solved. Mm -hmm. We see, we get the videotape, we save thousands of dollars, and you, the home audience, get to see the world's first uh, fully automatic, computerized, self-cleaning cat box. Who could ask for anything more? Huh? Right. However, what we thought we'd do to give you an idea of how it looks up close and personal, we'll bring the thing in here, and we'll fill it with clumping, uh, clumping litter and little Tootsie Rolls. You know? Wouldn't that be good? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or a little miniature baby Ruth, if you want true realism, you know, on the highway of life. <laughs> and we'll just, you know, fire the sucker up here and show the videotape. That'd be a good idea, don't you think? We'll do that some night next week, uh, along with another segment on uh, 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 remote imaging. <laughs> I just... I hate to let it go, you know? Anyway, Kate Mulgrew is here from the Starship tonight, and Dean Kuntz is here, the uh, author of the best-selling book. And there's one other thing I had rambling around in my mind. Oh, <sighs> Ray Fagelski, the legendary yes. director, TD of The Tonight Show, uh, now uh, our chief cameraman here, or, uh, well, they're all our chief cameramen. <laughs> She's now I'm in trouble with Paul and Mike, you know? But his wife, Barbara, sent a poem in here that is truly um, funny about growing older. So at the end of the show tonight, if you're good, you'll hear a truly funny poem and a tribute to Babe, which we hope is the Academy Award winning best picture of 1995. Anyway, let's get on with this thing, don't you think? Yeah, Absolutely. please. Yeah, they're giving me this. <laughs> <laughs> and that just tends to want to make me take longer. Uh, Kate Mulgrew, uh, Dean Kuntz, fire up the simultaneous and watch the pictures as they fly through the air. And thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> Now here is Kate Mulgrew, who stars as Captain Catherine Janeway in the enormously popular television series, Star Trek Voyager. Welcome back to our stage. Thank Happy you. Valentine's Day. Just Thank a few, you. Just a few days late. Was it a romantic time for you? I must stuff? say, I had a divine evening. Did, did you really? And how was yours? It couldn't have been better. Thank you. Did you, you send a multitude of flowers? Yes, to I did. To a very lucky yes, lady? Yes, I did. Mine was not only romantic, but mysterious. Really? Would you care to share just a few details with us before we I start? I will. Okay. I was told to be dressed up and ready by 6.30 promptly, which time I was picked up by my enamorata, 
who took me back to his house. My which? My inamorata. That's a bit, you know, I use the term companion. I like, it. can I borrow that, the inamorata? You may not only borrow it, you may have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'll take Speaking it. Speaking of yeah. testosterone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So back we went to his house, and I thought, well, this is all right. It's acceptable. What's he, you know, we're going to have a little champagne. And uh -huh. He's a guy, and that's right. He walked in. Table is beautifully laid. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, a woman arrived. She said nothing. She finished setting the table. She cooked us a three-course Italian meal, which was absolutely glorious. Oh, he poured an exquisite bottle of champagne. There were red roses on the table. Oh, wonderful. And at my place was, in fact, this... Oh, the little bottle. Which is Victorian. Oh, and how wonderful. Terribly beautiful. Yeah. So it was and, superb. And then? And then. <laughs> and then. Dessert? Dessert. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, yes. Yeah, speaking of guys, now you have got two sons. The last time we talked, they were 10 and 11. Have they, are, they're, they're probably a... a <laughs> have they stayed <laughs> exactly no, the same age? <laughs> no, Tom, because yeah. testosterone is at work. <laughs> they are now 11 and 12, and their mother is ready to slip into a coma. Why? Well, I, I guess it's difficult as puberty approaches, and as Art Linkletter called the male hormone, testosterone takes over these young bodies, it, it becomes a, 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 a tough go. I am allegedly a woman, yes, right? Yes, yes. So I'm looking at these creatures, and I haven't a clue <laughs> as to what... Something's exploding constantly. I mean from one minute to the next, the, the change can be diabolical. From joy to rage to sadness to steadiness, I don't understand it. And what kind, you, you know, when I was that age, I was always asking my mom and my dad, now, you, you know, you're a single mom, but I, I would always ask them questions about girls and guys and stuff like that. We talk. And, and, and they, would, they, they would try to answer as best they could, mm -hmm. although in the 50s, that kind of dialogue between parent and child was, was rare. What are your kids asking you about these days? They're very straightforward. Good. Extremely frank. So is their mom, by the way. Most of the conversation is. Although I wonder at this point, a part of me is hesitant, and I don't want it to be. Part of me is hesitant because of taboo. I know that I have to be vigilant about taboo, and yet I really don't know what the parameters of taboo are. How far can a mother carry a conversation about sex with a 12-year-old boy, who first of all has never had it, who's watching all of this stuff on television. He's being fed from sources that are not real. Right. But it's not true. Right. And you know it's the topic of conversation in the schoolyard, the classroom, all the, the telephone. Time. All the time. But right. his body is giving him a real message, mm -hmm. which is things are growing and developing and changing. And let's, and let's go. And let's go. But he appeals to me for a knowledge that I'm not sure I can give him because I am his mother. Yeah, but that's precisely the reason why you have to give him some information. Well, I can give him the basics, but I can't tell him. I think what a young man really wants to know is what's it going to feel like? What's it going to be like? How's she going to react? Am I going to be a slob, a jerk, a hero, a, you know? By the way, all those things the first time. A really? slob, a jerk, and a hero. Yeah. I yeah. sort of thought that's the way it was I mean, when you think that. back to your own, and I'm not looking for you to... to I've never to, had to, sex. <laughs> I knew there was a reason <laughs> you talked so That's quickly. That's why you invite me back so often. <laughs> Never had it. But if you think back, we were all... for a girl. I, oh, I know that. But for guys, we're buffoons, we're idiots, we're slobs, we, uh, you know, and we're, and we're wonderful. At least something we... takes over the male, doesn't it? Something incredible happens to the male. Mm -hmm. It does not happen to the female. Mm -mm. The female is praying to the Virgin Mary. Trust me every second of the way. But I think the male is saying, Virgin Mary. We don't even think of her at that point. She's, no, she's in church. You lose she's, all religion she, at that we point. We lose all you? religion, yes, yes. Uh, there is a moment in, ma in, in maildom when, when there is absolutely no conscience operating whatsoever. Yeah. Absolutely no consequence whatsoever. When is that moment? It, it, <laughs> when is that moment not <laughs> existing in the male life? Uh, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so now you being a female, there would be nothing in your experience with your own parents, your mother or your father, to help you with the mothering of these two young men, these two boys. Oh, of course there is. Oh, come on. I had, you know, significant and steady enough parenting to allow me to be skilled enough. But I'm talking to you about the mystery between a mother and her pubescent son, mm -hmm. which I don't think is often discussed. Every mother on the block says, I can handle my kid, he's 12, he's born. I know. I don't know. I don't know. So when we have these conversations, which we do daily at dinner, because mm -hmm. you know I'm a great proponent of dinner. Yes, I know. We you. sit, and I light the candles, and I try to... 
And I think, oh, isn't this going to be lovely? They're going to eat my spaghetti, and I'm going to drink wine, and it's going to be... And then it starts. Hey, Mom. You know, and the voice goes down. There was this girl today, and I wanted to... What is that expression they use in the schoolyard? Do any of you guys know it when... The, well, these guys wouldn't know school, schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a little beyond schoolyard here. They're all here. sitting there. Look, at this is the male face. Yeah, what's she going to say? You know. <laughs> well, what is it they say? He has a, an urge to do something physical to a girl. Mm -hmm. But it's aggressive. Mm -hmm. It's violent. I say it's sex, right? Mm -hmm. He wants to pull down his pa her pants, or he wants to knock her on the back. He wants to do something. He's instantly charged by anything she says that could be considered even remotely negative. Like... You pig or you suck yeah, or whatever they talk about. Right, 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 right. So I was called, you know, oh, I hope my children aren't watching this program. I doubt it. And indeed, there, this altercation took place in, in the school. Would there be any uh, kind of information, just to, just to help you over the hill for tomorrow night's dinner when you light the candles, is there any question that's on the table right now that's especially pressing that I, as a guy, could give you an answer to for these kids? You could help me, and I'm serious about okay. this. The emotional. It, do you think it's possible? Is this a, a, a ridiculous analogy that perhaps it's like an injection for a woman, a huge injection of hormones that from it, the morning at 8 o'clock to the afternoon at 4, this kid can change so wildly, emotionally. That's the difficult thing. I don't... And you think you didn't when you were that age? In different ways to be sure. But I had a daughter 12 years old, and then 12 and 13, she ran the gamut between, between high and low, up and down, happy, sad, laughing, crying. It, it, uh, 24 hours a day, it went back and forth. I hear this is true of daughters. Even more true of you. But you know what's interesting to me is, you know, they talk about uh, the bond between husband and wife, the bond between uh, father and daughter, mm. uh, the bond between grandparent and grandchild, but the strongest bond of all the one that you can never, ever, ever get in the way of is that between mother and son, from cradle to grave. I love you, my son. <laughs> yes. True? I think it's true. It's deep. It's very, very deep. Anyway, let's go back to your own childhood here. And it's, it's come to an end, and you're leaving Dubuque, and here comes the feet again. <laughs> <laughs> you always go back to my childhood. Yes, yes. And, and you're leaving to go to New York. Mm -hmm. And you're, as we talked the last time, you lived at the Barbizon Hotel. Yes, you, but very, only very, very I brief. know, but you were looking to become an actress in New York and, and, and become the, 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 the queen of Broadway. But in the meantime, you must have had to do something to keep yourself going. I worked. Yeah. I labored. Oh. My daily life was so rigorous, you wouldn't believe it. I did. I worked in every bar and restaurant in the Upper East Side. Fryer Tucks Inn. I got fired from the Fryer Tucks Inn. I dumped what? a plate of spaghetti in a guy's lap. I really wasn't in the mood to hear it that day. <laughs> I uh, was a cocktail waitress at night, waited tables during the day, ran to school, was in a five-floor walk-up. It was hard. Yeah, tough. Did you go to school at all in New York? Tom, my father may be watching. Of course I went to school. You know I went to New York University. <laughs> Why are you giving me the old wink? <laughs> because huh? uh, there's more I'm to this having than... that, that spasm yeah. problem. There's I have it. Uh, come on, your program. <laughs> I went to New York a University. Anyway, we'll, 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 we'll probe more deeply into this mystery of, of, uh, of uh, school in New York. And okay. NYU, wasn't it? Yes, it yeah, was. For years and years and years on end. Yes. Kate Mulgrew is the guest. The program is Star Trek Voyager. There's an episode coming up which has an incredible dialogue about mortality versus immortality. That's right. We will, we will, we will talk about her schooling and then on to immortality here on the Highway of Life. <laughs> you know the segment we're going to do next week when we do the, uh, the, uh, the world's... Uh, do you have cats at home? No cats. Oh, because we... Oh, okay. We don't have the world's self-cleaning uh, dog box. We have a cat. But we'll do an uh, uh, earthquake update oh, with, with our friend from uh, the, yeah, Caltech. It'd be great, huh? <laughs> yes, Tom. Now these messages. <laughs> It's a beautiful day at McDonald's as Mrs. Foley steps up, checks the sign, and delivers. Big Mac extra value meal, please. Nice one. Dave Garcia fields the call, dishes to Scott English. English cooks, Brett Groom wraps with a no-look pass to Lori Cole. Tony Fernandez scoops fries and assists on the drink. Skipper Jim Brook with an incredible move, hands off to Garcia, who turns, smiles, and connects. Thanks, come again. The crowd absolutely loves this. We're Team McDonald's, proud to serve you and be the official break of the Olympic Games. He's back in a zone. What are you sending? It's for Carlos. In California? It's a book about maturity. 
You can't buy a book about maturity. AT&T True Reach Savings saves you 25% on all kinds of U.S. calls on your AT&T phone bill when you spend just $25 a month. Even 2,000 miles away, Jimmy. Privacy? I'm going to call you day and night. Every hour. Every hour? True Reach Savings. That's your true choice. AT&T. It's give it all you got speed. The prize, a place in the Daytona 500. The Gatorade 125, Saturday on CBS. Sunday, Rockford is back to help a friend in need. There is Godfather. They're booking me. A godson who's wanted for murder. We're not talking about Joey right? I didn't kill her, Jim. It's a mobster madhouse in true Rockford style. You pass a mirror. Is there a reflection? James Garner in the Rockford Files. Godfather knows best. Sunday. We are with uh, Kate Mulgrew. So what was your degree in from NYU? And you call yourself, however lapsed, a Roman Catholic. <laughs> I defected, and I admit to it now. Mm -hmm. But I could not then mm -hmm. say this to my father, mm -hmm. who felt that he was subsidizing my education. And the tuition checks kept arriving at the manse? Huh? <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, forgive me. I can't actually remember when I quit. I think I quit at the end of my sophomore year, but it could have been at the end of my junior. It's all a mm -hmm. blur in my focused, hot, focused drive to become an actress. Uh, I don't remember very much, except that I forgot to tell him that I was, <laughs> had left school. <laughs> so he found out years later. Why did you want to be an actress? What was it that happened? Did something happen to you in Dubuque that you, you said, you know, yes. I, this is what I want to do? Have you been to Dubuque? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, I, as a matter of fact, I was once. My dad was a traveling salesman, and in summertime, you know, he'd make these trips to sell stuff, and he would take me or my brother every now and again for a trip, and we spent one night in Dubuque, Iowa. And what are your memories? <laughs> what are your memories, Tom? <laughs> Tell me now. Why? Get this man something to drink. I went to a Catholic school. Of course, there's nothing else in Dubuque, Iowa, called Resurrection, mm -hmm. which was uh, dotted with uh, nuns of the presentation order, as I recall, which is quite an extraordinary habit. And they were rather dour ladies. Most of them were probably farmer's daughters. Very serious, very simple. I'm sure very lovely of heart, but hard to crack. No laughs, no jokes, and not a lot of soul going on. Mm -hmm. Except for my fifth grade teacher, Sister Benedict, who said to me, you write wonderful poetry. I encourage you to write. I think you have the gift. I said, well, I'm not so sure I've got the gift of poetry. I'm a little florid. It's a little over the top. She said, well, why don't we find out? Read some of your poetry. Recite your poetry. To the school. All the nuns and all the kids. So I went home. I said to my mother, God, you're not going to believe it. Sister Benedict, she said, you're not going to read. You're not reading your own poetry. It's so horrible. Read The White Cliffs by Alice Dewar Miller. It's a killer love poem, right? About the First World War, which I did. And I remember I finished it. And of course, I was quite nervous. This long poem. And I looked down, and I saw an entire row of nuns in tears. I said, that's it. This make is a, for me. Make a nun cry? I mean, that's quite a moment. Make yes. a nun cry? You got it made, huh? That's right. <laughs> yep. That's it. <laughs> On my tombstone. <laughs> she made the nuns cry. <laughs> Here's Dennis in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm fine, Dennis. Thanks for I joining our program. I thank you. How's everything in Asbury Park tonight? Uh, it, we're, it's snowing out here. Oh. oh. We have about well, uh, get, eight get, inches Well, get snow. the blowers ready in the morning. Do, do they still have the, uh, the National College Queen pageant in Asbury Park, New Jersey? No. Asbury Park is really going downhill. Well, years. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know, will you? <laughs> sure. Hey, say hi to Kate. <laughs> Dennis is on to you. I can tell. Hi, Kate. Honey, Hello, Dennis. Honey, they're all on to me. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. They all know there he is, you know, more tough talk from Tom. I'm Turn sorry. Out, okay, Dennis, yes? You yes. Were... Uh, uh, I love the uh, Star Trek uh, series, yours and, and the other ones. Is there going to be a sequel to the uh, original series involving the original crew? The original, original. I don't think so, Dennis. No, I don't, no. I don't believe so. I don't think so. there are any plans for that, unfortunately, because they were splendid, but, you know. Uh, they're not going to maybe adapt other, um, you know, other characters and maybe uh, substitute them and that type of thing? I wouldn't think so. I think that, that newness is a big part of this uh, game and actually a part of its success. However, you should never quote me <laughs> because I'm, I'm usually wrong, Dennis. But uh, I don't think it's, it's very likely that any of them 
any of the characters or any of the series would be repeated. In other words, uh, Dennis, put it out of your mind, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Tom, uh, one other thing. Uh, you had mentioned about the electronic uh, litter system. Yes, sir. Oh. Yes. Um, my friend and I, we've also invented and patented an electronic litter system. Is that right? For, for cats, right? For cats, yes. Yeah. And, we, you know, we have a patent on it, and uh, we also have a video. Really? And, and if you'd like, I, you know, I could send you a copy. What I like? <laughs> it's it's, it's does, my reason for being. Dennis, does yours work the same uh, well, as, no, as our, Tom's? I, I think I know which one Tom uh, is referring to. His is uh, rectangular. Ours is completely uh, circular. Really? Yes. Could you, uh, what format is that videotape in? Uh, it's uh, VHS. VHS. If you would send that to us as quickly as possible, I would very much like to have it. Okay, great. Great. Terrific. Great. Uh, and are you selling any of these things, Dennis, or well, is this... we're not into production yet. Okay. But um, ours is, you know, Johnny on the Spot, they have the portable toilets. Yeah, I know that ours, one, yeah. Ours is called I, I think, on the I think, Spot. I think they I changed... <laughs> No, this, by the way, this is what, this is what fires this program, is, is discussions of good ideas to come. I mean, you know, we, you know, anybody, any, anybody can put Tony Bennett out here to sing love songs, but give me a cat box that cleans itself, and I've saved America, for Christ's sake. Don't get me going. We have a tasteful video with about a dozen cats. I, Dennis, wait a second. I'm very excited. Hold, what did you say? I said we have a uh, tasteful video of about a dozen cats using it. A tasteful video? Uh, hey. <laughs> By all means, send it to Mr. Snyder. I haven't seen him as animated. The Do more, you? the merrier, Dennis, okay? Okay. Uh, who would I send it to? You'd send it to me. Okay. Is there a certain address? Yes, there is. It's 7800 Beverly Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90036. Okay, great. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Okay. Great. Bye bye now. <laughs> I cannot believe it. We're in information here. We're in, we're in new products. You we're in, are. We're in the highway to something. Right. <laughs> uh, it is amazing. We, 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 are in, uh, we are into, uh, we have seen the future here and it works. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, coming up now, this, this new episode, I've got to do this little break here. And then it's mortality versus immortality in the, in the forthcoming episode of uh, the Star Trek Voyager. Right. With the commander of Kate Mulgrew. Uh, we will be right back after these messages. We were called an experiment. Two. So many stars. Isn't that they move. So many laughs. So many videos. Are you talking to Mayor McCheese? It will not knock, knock. knock you out. Stay in prime time, Monday at 10, 9 central. Now let's get to this episode here, which I is coming up. Talk about death wish after this. <laughs> <laughs> tell the people what we talk you tell about them what we when would... we're not on the air. No, you tell them. Computerized kitty litters, right? Th th that's three hours. And now we just talked for two hours about sex and how men love sex. And how often we think about and it. And they think about sex every second. And what did we say about how often women think about sex? How often do you think about sex? Well, I really do. Th I mean, it depends on your circumstances, doesn't it? How often do I consciously think mm -hmm. about sex? Maybe once a day. Really? Maybe twice. No kidding. Oops, drop <laughs> <laughs> But really? uh, I certainly don't think about it as much as I think any male count. Every second of every day. What women don't understand, you know how, like... Are you thinking about sex when you're thinking about the kitty litter? That's the question. Um, it's in the same general area, isn't it? It's, oh, God. It's, one is very close, right? You know, like, like you, you, you probably have... Uh, Valentine's night, you had a wonderful meal with your, with your inamorato, inamorato, and you were satisfied. Uh, you, you didn't wish any more food or drink at the end of the meal, right? No, I did not. Okay. But I'll bet the next evening at dinner time. You were as hungry for that meal as you were for the one that had taken place the night before. You see, you have any idea where I'm going with this? I think I do, Tom. Okay. I think everybody in this room will probably. <laughs> but please go. So you see, to a guy, mm -hmm. like, like you can have the greatest sexual experience of your life on a Monday, and by Tuesday... You're bereft. Exactly. <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> gotcha. Can you understand that at all? I can understand it. But you're not bereft, are you? No, we are not. <laughs> well, why is that? 
I would say even slightly depressed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to Larry now in Hollywood, California. And I hope we get to this episode of Immortality oh, versus Mortality. Because so you're killing me off here tonight. <laughs> Here's Larry in Hollywood, California. Hi, Larry. Welcome to the show. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Kate. Good Hello. evening. Uh, Kate, I was a big fan of Ryan's Soap for 15 years from start to finish. Mm -hmm. And you were the best thing in it. Thank what was you the most very much. Excuse me? I said thank you very uh, much. You're very welcome. What was the most difficult thing about doing a soap opera day after day, and when did you know it was time to leave? Bothering me again. I was only on that soap opera very briefly. Everybody thinks I was on for a long time, but it was actually only a year and a half, maybe two. And there was nothing uh, difficult about it. I found it to be quite easy work. In fact, if I were to say anything about it, not challenging enough. Really? What? But this, this soap opera, Ryan's Hope, was written and created and produced by my dear friend, Claire Levine. And I think it, it stood alone in its original flavor. I think it, in its message, in its writing, everything about it was superior. So I, I was extremely fortunate to have yeah. had that experience. Can I ask you a question, Larry? Sure. Since this program will not be seen in the Los Angeles area for three more hours, how come you're calling us now? The things I do that to speak to Kate Mulgrew. <laughs> ah, nice. It's a very good answer. To hey. ask well, one quick question about Trek, since it hasn't come up yet. Sure. Sure. Uh, besides the episode airing on Monday, which episode would you pick as the example of your best work? Resistance, which aired earlier in the season. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, with Joel Gray. Yes. And directed by Rick Colby. I think uh, that exemplified probably the best possible Janeway to date. Thank you very much for both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Have a nice evening. Watch the show later and see yourself, okay? I can't wait. All right, bye-bye. <laughs> now, let's get to this. The dialogue as it takes place in this episode, uh, mortality versus immortality, mm -hmm. and, the, and, and the, the argument that has gone on through the centuries amongst men and women of intellect and not as to whether mortality is better than... Him. Yeah, but you know that this is a real Q classic problem, I suspect. He is omnipotent this character called Q. Q, right. <clears throat> Splendidly played by John Delancey, who is one of my best friends. So you can imagine what a gift this was. Mm -hmm. The dilemma in this show was, there is an, uh, for lack of a better word, I'll say an alternate Q, a second Q. Okay. Who presents himself to a me. A pseudo Q. No, another Q. An alternate Q. A real Q. A real Q. So we've got Q1, John Delancey, Q2, also beautifully played by Garrett Graham, and we have Captain Janeway and the rest of my crew. And the two Qs appear, and Q number two, played by Garrett Graham, says, my problem is I don't want to be immortal. I want to be mortalized so that I may commit suicide. And I want you to have a hearing on the ship to decide whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So that is the episode. Whether we should allow him to go back to the continuum, into an incarceration, which is what he considers immortality to be, mm -hmm. or by allowing him to live, I know that what I'm really doing is, I suppose, advocating his own suicide. Mm -hmm. It's a real dilemma for Janeway. Compelling television it on is. the air this coming it Monday is, night. It is. It's great. Has there been any, you know, we've spent this whole evening talking about matters sexual. Uh, has there been any sexual uh, 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 frivolity on the starship? Not a lot. <laughs> and we're going to talk about sex in space now, aren't we? No, we aren't. <laughs> you came up to me earlier. You said, did you... Well, I remarked to you that I'd I once... I think it's a fascinating idea. What do you think? I think it'd be wonderful, just considering, you know, the loss of gravity and all that that implies. It allows the imagination Ooh, to wander. Oh, come <laughs> back here, <you> <laughs> <laughs> On that note, young lady, <laughs> I th you know I think the world of you, and I love having you, and I and hope that you'll you. come back and visit us often. And uh, with your sons, trust me, it's going to be okay. You'll muddle through, and they're going to turn out to be fine, upstanding young guys, and, 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 and you're going to be proud of them and love them for the rest of their lives. All right. Okay. From your mouth to God's yeah. ears. Any trouble? Call me. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll be right over. I will. Kate Mulgrew is the guest. Uh, Star Trek Voyager is the program on the air on, uh, I believe, Monday nights. Monday nights. Okay. Today. You'll check the listings for the exact time in your area. We'll be right back with Dean Kuntz, the author of the best-selling book in America today, after these messages.